I'm going to bring to the stage uh, Todd Beats, uh, who's our director of product. He's going to talk about uh, how to effectively debug in the NAT CLI, which I think is going to be useful for everybody who's uh, playing with NATs these days. So take it away, Todd. Awesome. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, I can't promise a lightning talk. I don't think I fat speak it's fast okay. enough. I'll, that, I'll keep you to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you will. But maybe maybe a little bit of a you know dramatic rolling thunder. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the NAT CLI. It's really the Swiss Army knife tool as we think of it. Um, but as we're going through it, remember, and I like to to remind folks that it's just a NAT's application. So the NAT CLI doesn't have special powers. It is just a NAT application. Everything you see and do in NAT CLI, you could do yourself uh, programmatically. Um, so I want to talk about maybe uh, what we call the big three when we're working with um, the community and uh, customers and, and trying to get an idea of their environment or work through an issue with them. Um, sort of the big three commands that we, we initially run, you know, with these folks to kind of get an idea of what's going on in a, a particular environment. And if we have time, maybe we'll go on to um, do a little bit of interest graph introspection. I know there was interest uh, earlier in the session from folks about observability. Um, so the first of the big three is, is the, uh, the ever-present NAT server list. Um, so this works in any NATS environment, whether it's a single server, a cluster, a super cluster, and whether or not you have Jetstream enabled. It's, it's kind of the bread and butter. And really, when you do a NAT server list, and, and this is all a system from the operator's point of view, um, we're really doing that info ping in scatter gather. So the NAT CLI is, is, is basically talking to all the servers, um, you know, acting as a service, those those servers are giving back information, and the NAT CLI is is aggregating and presenting it in a nice view. So really cool, really handy. It's it's the first go to, and it has a lot of information. It will tell you about uh, the clusters that can be seen, the the current routings, um, information about supercluster and communication um, between clusters as gateway connections. Um, information about the version of, of NAT's code that's running in that system, um, some inf you know basic information about the host, memory, CPU. And it'll give you an idea of if NATs and those 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 server nodes are, are seeing what it what deems a slow consumer. So there might be performance contention. So a lot of statistics, a lot of information. Um, but one of the things to point out is is as Derek mentioned before, NATs is very dynamic. Um, and so this is a very unopinionated view. This is what can be seen right now. It's not going to tell you if this is the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, it's just going to be this is what can, uh, can be seen. So if you're an operator, um, you may know what you're looking for and you can immediately spot um, issues. So for instance, what if we are having an issue? So, you know, stuff happens. Um, uh, here in my demo environment, I have one of our networks go out, you know, the infamous backhoe. Um, and now I'm running that server list and, and trying to determine whether something is going on. Um, so if I know that I have a, a machine or a node called vbox 4 I can immediately see that it's absent. Um, and I can see that the connections have changed between my clusters. Um, and between nodes and individual clusters. So I see different numbers for routes and gateways. Um, but again, this is unopinionated. It's not gonna flash any warnings at you or anything like that. It's just saying, what can be seen right now? Um, so you need to bring your own sort of knowledge about what you're looking for uh, to the table. Um, in comparison, sort of the, the second of the big three that we often run, because uh, many users of NATs are now taking advantage of Jetstream. And when Jetstream is enabled um, in a cluster, you have, you have uh, Jetstream enabled NAT servers. Um, one of the things you get automagically or, or with that architecture is this magic service called the uh, Jetstream meta service, um, which really lives across all of your system and from a Availability perspective runs on all of your nodes, so there's not a single point of failure. Um, and it's really tracking Jetstream enabled servers, at least. And so now you have sort of more information and, and some ideas maybe when things uh, are not right at a glance as well. Um, so this is the server 
report jet stream command, um, similar in some ways with some similar information. Um, so it's complementary to NAT server list, uh, but it really has this additional block, which is the raft metagroup information. So this is really stateful information that uh, that the meta service is tracking. And so it's it's really looking to see if it has connectivity with, with all of the server nodes that it expects to have connectivity with, if they're healthy, if there's any lag in communication, et cetera, um, at that jet stream layer. So this is this is a really good indication. This is a view of when everything looks great. Okay. But it's that digger again. So let's let's uh, our yellow net has has been taken out and another one of our VBox six this time has disappeared. So one of the interesting and useful things about NAT server report Jetstream as a command and in the sort of meta information and state that goes behind that um, is, as we can see a few things, if we're interested, we could see that our meta service is still up because it automatically and almost instantaneously moved from VBox six where it lived before to VBox seven. Um, but in this view, we can actually see that it's indicate that, hey, VBox six, which was in yellow net, um, it's not communicating with everyone. So it's not current, it's not online. Um, so it's a little bit more of an opinionated view of, of that, that can be useful in a lot of situations, especially in a, in a jet stream enabled environment. Um, so a third, this one's a little bit lesser known. Um, and I think we might not advertise it still, maybe in the latest release we do when NAT's CLI, but, but you can use the NAT's traffic command and this is an interesting one because it gives a continuous sort of rolling set of statistics, which you can see kind of in the middle. And NATS traffic is really interesting because it's it's basically listening to everything in the cluster. Um, and so you can kind of see a lot of information what's going on and it's continuously updated. We're going to drill in though, one of the things that's interesting in a debugging scenario is looking at these uh, proposal and votes column in the raft traffic. Um, a happy, stable system that's not, you're not deploying, you're not changing streams and assets and consumers, generally you won't see votes here, right? Because uh, everybody's happy, there's current leaders and all the RAF groups, etc. cetera. Um, but when things happen, um, in this case, Black Swan event, so two, two out of three uh, availability zones go down. So we have a stream asset named Baz, which is essentially disabled. Right, an R3 stream. Um, now Nats traffic will show you at a glance that there is voting going on. You know, the remaining node is going, hey, is anybody there? Is anybody there? Anybody there? So it's a quick way to notice that um, some jet stream assets may be impaired or, or some servers may be down. So I think I have one or two minutes. Um, so outside of the big three, I thought I would drill in because there's some interest in this um, that I've heard about. And it's one of the the powerful sort of observability traits of that's built into NATS. Um, so anything, for those who are familiar with the HTD monitor, anything you can really do the data you can get through the HTTP monitor, you can actually get through the CLI as well. So the NATS server uh, request connections command, for instance, and uh, a couple examples. Here's one where I wanna know throughout my supercluster uh, who is subscribed to a subject called Fufu. Right, and I can get that. And it turns out that um, a user, user a2 at user.net, um, is subscribed to Fufu. So that's interesting. Who is subscribed to this topic or subject? And they're sort of the opposite of that. Uh, maybe I'm debugging a scenario where one of my application developers is saying, "Hey, I'm not getting messages with my app." We can go, "Okay, what? What's your user? I'm user c1 at user.net," and I can go and look and see. What is the subscription interest of that that running application? And, and sure enough, I could see that uh, they're they're not subscribed to Fufu, but rather with capital letters um, Fufu. So they're 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 listening to a different subject, and that's why they're not getting messages. Um, so I hope that was useful, Jeremy. I think I did it. I you think did, I got did it ten time. minutes you, right. You I got through those it. slides. Is, I am happy awesome. with that. Cool. Yeah, I mean the the capital letters is always a killer. It's uh, the off off by one character quite often. So it's so cool to see how powerful the CLI is and all the things that you can do to debug it. This is this is awesome. So thanks so much for sharing, Todd. Cool. Thank you.